Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Sega Mega Drive game, Ghouls and Ghosts. This game is a side-scrolling hack and slash released by Capcom in arcades in 1988. This game was later ported to various home consoles. The Mega Drive version reached in Europe in 1990, the game being released alongside the console. This review was requested by a good friend of mine here on YouTube, Robbie, who goes under the screen name The Secret Game Room. I'd like to thank him for requesting I review Ghouls and Ghosts, and I just hope this review will meet his expectations. Before I go any further, I think I should point out that I haven't actually beaten this game. Whilst I've beaten this game using an invincibility cheat and progressed most of the way using legitimate methods, in my many attempts I've been unable to actually complete the game. So, if you're the kind of person who gets upset about people not beating games before reviewing them, I apologise. That said, I've put a lot of time into playing this game, so I do feel that my comments are still valid. At heart, Ghouls and Ghosts is a fairly straightforward side scroller. Playing as the Knight Arthur, you must defeat scores of undead and demonic creatures whilst advancing through a variety of levels. The game is punctuated by boss battles, which typically occur at the end of levels. As you'd expect, they do require a little more strategy to destroy than the regular beasts you explore throughout the game, although none are impossibly hard to conquer. Arthur can utilise a variety of weapons to help him defeat enemies, though only one can be equipped at a time. He changes weapons by destroying chests containing items. Some can be fired quicker than others, some firing straight and others following the incline of surfaces, so part of the challenge is finding the best weapon to use in particular situations. Once you beat the game first time around, you're sent right back to the start, since you apparently need some special weapon to defeat Loki, the final boss. Typical way, eh? to finish completely, you have to play through the game all over again to defeat Loki. In Ghouls and Ghosts, you offer two difficulty levels, Practice and Professional. But even the Practice mode isn't exactly a walk in the park, that is, unless your local park is infested with zombies and demons. In fact, the slight criticism I have of this game is that it sometimes feels too hard, particularly if you're equipped with a weapon that isn't really suitable for the level. The flip side of the game sometimes punishing difficulty level is that it will no doubt satisfy those of you looking for a challenge. One slight gripe I have with this game is the way at which enemies spawn and respawn. It makes it pretty difficult to completely clear areas and there have been occasions where I've died from running into enemies spawning right in front of me, which was rather frustrating. In my opinion, Ghouls and Ghosts doesn't really do an awful lot that hasn't been seen in the plethora of side scrollers released around the time. But what it does do, it does well. The game is challenging and enjoyable for the most part, though it can sometimes be a little frustrating at points. Because of this, I give the gameplay 8 out of 10. The graphics for Ghouls and Ghosts are great for a game released so early in the Mega Drive lifetime. It uses the Mega Drive's colour palette very effectively. As a result, none of the environments look drab, being packed with colour. Parallax scrolling is also used to create an illusion of depth, and the levels are creatively designed, although some familiar concepts are recycled, like in the fire and ice stages. Unfortunately, a few graphical glitches do rear their ugly heads from time to time, which destroy the polished image this game tries to present. These are most noticeable during boss fights, where black lines sometimes randomly appear on the boss's torsos. Whilst these errors don't really affect the gameplay, they do suggest a lack of effort on the developer's part. For that reason, I can only award Ghouls and Ghosts 7 out of 10 for graphics. Ghouls and Ghosts Musical Accompaniment does a pretty good job of setting the tone of the level, which tends to be dark and angry. However, I wouldn't say the tunes are terribly memorable. They're not on par with the score from Sonic the Hedgehog, for instance. Similarly, sound effects get the job done, but they won't make you stay awake at night with excitement. In terms of audio, I give Ghouls and Ghosts 8 out of 10. The controls for this game are what you'd expect for this kind of game. One button fires your weapon, whilst another jumps and the D-pad controls your character's movement. They're intuitive and fairly responsive, although the jumping mechanics are nowhere near as precise as in other platformers like Super Mario Bros. As far as I can tell, holding the button makes no difference to the length of your jump, so it's more difficult to accurately hurdle obstacles. Therefore, I give the controls 7 out of 10. 
Ghouls and Ghosts scores highly in the replayability department. Because of the relatively short nature of the game, it's ideal to pick up and play in short bursts. If you master it, you should be able to beat it in one sitting. The range of weapons on offer encourages you to play through the game repeatedly to figure out the best way to approach levels, and I imagine Ghouls and Ghosts will remain enjoyable even after many completions because of its fun and addictive gameplay. Ghouls and Ghosts gets an 8 out of 10 for lasting a pit. Overall, I'd say Ghouls and Ghosts is a great side scroller worthy of comparison with classics like Golden Axe, The Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage. Its graphics, music and gameplay are all solid and playing this game is always a blast. That said, it's not without its faults, with the strange graphical glitches and rather awkward controls lower in my opinion of this game. In conclusion, I give Ghouls and Ghosts 8 out of 10. Ok guys, thanks for watching, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks once again to Robbie for requesting this review, and as always, I'll put up another video soon. Bye.